Hey guys, Hayden here with another Top 10. Now if you read the title of the video, you will already have known that this is my Antifurial Campus screen. Uh, it is my Top 10 Multiplayer Games. Now to clarify what you guys might be thinking of as a multiplayer game, this does not mean that the game is only multiplayer. If the game has a multiplayer co-op mode or whatever, it is it counts. Actually, I think all of these games have a single player mode. Yeah, I'm pretty sure every game on this list has a single player mode in it. So that's what this is. Another thing before I start this list, I'm only counting one game per franchise. Or no, sorry, not one game per franchise, one game per series is a better way of putting it. For example, Mario Party and Mario Kart are under the Mario franchise, but they are of different series. So I'm going one game per series. Okay, so hope that makes sense before you guys like rip me apart in the comments, because if I was doing if I, if I wasn't doing the one per series rule, then there'd be a, a few a few series on this list that would completely dominate this. But um, with that stuff out of the way, let's move on to my number ten spot, which is Battletoads. Now I've got, I've got some notes here. Sorry. Uh, so Battletoads, the game is it's super infamous for being just brutally difficult. Like I don't think that's a bad thing though. You know, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was really fun to try and overcome the challenge of it being brutal. Uh, me and my brother would actually, we'd come home from school like every day uh, for like probably a month straight at least. This is when we were like 10 and 8. And uh, we would hop on co-op player for a uh, co-op mode of uh, Battletoads. We'd try and beat it every friggin' day after school. We never made it past the speed bike level, of course. But this is actually the only game on this list that I have not beaten. But um, I really want to get back to it and try it maybe when I'm home at Christmas or something. But uh, it was just super fun, you know, having someone else there. It just made less for you to focus on, because if you've ever played Battletoads, you'd know that it can get quite hectic. So uh, the music and the gameplay were awesome. So yeah, Battletoads is my number 10 spot. Now moving on to my number 9 spot is Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Super Nintendo. Now this game, I don't think it's that well known. I, I could be wrong. I, I actually only ended up getting this game when I was like 15, so I didn't really play it in the Super Nintendo era. But it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. Um, I think it's one of the best multiplayer games on the Super Nintendo, personally. Um, the Super Nintendo didn't have that many multiplayer games, really. I found it was better single player, but anyway, uh, the game had a lot of variety with its weapons. Uh, there's lots of different power ups you could get. You could get like soda bombs. You you had your spray gun. You had like a chainsaw. No, it was a whippersnapper, I think. Um, but multiplayer, playing multiplayer opposed to single player was easier and harder at the same time. Because it was easier in the sense that you had a second person shooting everything, but it was harder in the sense that it was hard. You had to coordinate with each other where you wanted to go, because one person couldn't go off screen. You always had to be on the same screen, so you always had to move around together and kind of coordinate your attacks. So depending on who you're playing with, it could be easier or harder. Uh, but I actually found the game, me, me and one of my uh, childhood friends, we, uh, we actually ended up beating this game on co-op mode together. Um, but I, neither of us could beat it on our own in single player, so it just goes to show who you're playing with really, uh, really makes a difference. But, um, you know, there's lots of variety in the enemies, the levels. There's one level with like a giant baby or something, like, just an awesome game. So that's my number, uh, nine spot. Now moving on to my number eight spot is Clay Fighter. Now, this is a really obscure pick, and expect more of them on this list. But, um, I, I kinda had to have one true fighting game on this list. And Clay Fighter is really the only one that I've had a decent amount of time playing. Now, Clay Fighter is kind of a parody of like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, those kind of games. Um, it's hilarious. It, it's basically it, it is a straight up parody. Like the people that you play as in the game are like there's an evil like snowman. There's like a piece of taffy. There's a blob. There's a there's a like Elvis Presley ripoff or something like that. It's just the most random characters you can play as, but it's super fun and it's it's your standard fighting game formula. You know, you've got your your standard attacks, your specials, your combos, all that stuff. But um, this game is just hilarious, it's random as hell. But like the, some of the things that the people say, the fighters say in this game, are just hilarious. Like it, if you can find this in a bargain shop, definitely pick it up. And if you like fighter games, then you're definitely gonna like this because it's just it's fun. It's just as fun as like any old fighting game. I don't want to say it's as fun as like Street Fighter 2 or something, but um, it, you know, it, it's a, you're going to get as much fun out of, out of it as any other fighting game that's got like combos and all that, but it's just really funny. So yeah, that is my number eight spot. So moving on to number seven 
is the Mario and Luigi battle mode from uh, New Super Mario Brothers. Now this game, uh, the single player was great, honestly, but I really liked the Mario and Luigi multiplayer mode. Um, in a Mario game, you, you wouldn't really expect a multiplayer mode, like a battle mode, like in a regular Super Mario game, but this game did it, and I'm kind of glad it did. So what it is, is you play as either Mario or Luigi. I always chose Luigi, I just like him better. Um, and it's basically a competition to see who can collect the most stars within the within a time limit. And you can get coins to uh, get like power-ups and stuff like mushrooms, fly, fire flowers, mega mushrooms, all that stuff. And it's just, there's five, there's, I think there's five different stages. So there's a lot of variety and like any game is different. Like any game can go to either person just depending on what kind of power-ups you get. And it's just really hectic. Like I, I would almost like equate the hecticness to like a Super Smash Brothers match because there can be stars flying everywhere. Someone can have a mega mushroom and you're running away. And me and my brother would play this all the time. Like at some points, like me and my brother would be screaming so much from the Mario and Luigi mode that like my mom would have to come in the room to see if everything was okay. And we would just be laughing and screaming and it's just a lot of fun. So the Mario and Luigi mode from New Super Mario Brothers on the DS is my number seven, yeah, number seven spot. So moving on to my number six spot is Wii Sports. Now I might get some flack for this one because some people don't even consider it to be a real game, but I totally consider it a game. Some people say it's a glorified tech demo, but this this is you have to admit it's it, it is a game in some sense, whether you think it's a game or not. That didn't sound very good, but um, Wii Sports probably the only game that my family, like my meaning my parents, would play with me. It's just a lot of fun, you know, like it's just regular golfing or regular baseball, but it's a video game. So my parents thought, okay, we'll try it. And it was just a lot of fun. I never really played the boxing and the um, the tennis, but the baseball, the golf, and the bowling, I had a lot of fun with, you know. My my family and I would, like, we would, or like all my family members and me, even my grandparents would get into it sometimes. Sometimes we would just sit down in the living room and play this for hours. Like, I just have so many memories of playing Wii Sports with my family. Um, you know, it's it's not really. I, I don't know. It, it is a game, but it was it was kind of just shown to like see. Oof, it was just kind of made to show what the Wii could do, and it did it in spades, and it did it enough to make it into my top ten list. So Wii Sports is my number six. You know, just r really simple concept, but just a lot of fun, and it's, a, it's something that I have a lot of memories with with my family. Now moving on to my number five. Now this is an obscure pick for sure. Bomberman for the Nintendo DS. Now, this game, I actually ended up pick, just taking this out of a bargain bin for like $5 when I was like 12 or something. And my God, was it ever worth more than $5, at least in my opinion, with the amount of fun that me and my friends had. So, Bomberman for the TS, you could do up to eight players, which was, there weren't a lot of games at the time that could do that. So, that was really sick. But um, the fact that you had two screens to play on opposed to one made for a lot more room. But even when there was eight players, it got a little crowded. But that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Because when it, if you know from playing Super Smash Brothers, a hectic and crowded match isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, you'll be screaming and laughing and like everyone will be super excited. And it, it, if you know how a hectic a Super Smash Brothers match can get, you'll understand how hectic a Bomberman DS match can get. You know, there may be one guy with 10 fire power ups that like, is just killing everyone, and you and your friends kind of try to make an alliance to up against him. Just, just so much fun. There's a lot of different power ups in this game for a lot of different variety. You know, someone might have remote bombs, and someone might have like power bombs that like explode all over the place. And it's just a lot of fun. This is actually a game that me and my friends like every day before school started, and every day like like during lunch hour, we would sit down like in the hallway or whatever, like in our own little corner because we were we were the nerd group. But I didn't care. Uh, and we would just play this game. I was actually the only one in my group that had this game, and we would always download off my one card and just play this game for pretty much the whole lunch and like whenever or whenever we got to school, like on the bus and whatnot. So, you know, just a lot of fun. So that's why this is my number five spot. You know, really unexpected how much fun I got out of it, and that fun was a lot of fun. So moving on to my number four is Mario Kart DS. Now. A lot of people like argue over which Mario Kart is the best, but a lo I, th I find, at least from my experience with the internet, that Mario Kart DS is usually a favorite among the Mario Kart series. Now, I didn't actually own this game as a kid. I own it now, 
but a lot of my friends owned it when I was younger and we would always play a um, balloon battle again during like recess and lunch, like same with Bomberman. But um, my God, we played this game so much. Like, I had never actually played a Mario Kart game before this. I had heard about Mario Kart before, like on the Game Boy Advance and on the GameCube, but it was never something that really like piqued my interest. I never really like, I, I never really like liked racing games. So I was like, Oh, why am I going to like Mario Kart? And to this day, I still don't even like racing games that much, but Mario Kart is definitely an exception. Um, so yeah, like we would usually, like sometimes we would race, but we would usually play balloon battle. Again, just really hectic matches, especially when there was eight of us playing. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you know, there was always that one douche who would get like triple red shells and then they would steal everyone. Oh no, you use the stars and the mushrooms to steal people's balloons. But like there would always be one person with like six balloons and like triple red shells. So then me and my friends would try and take down that person. It's just, just a lot of fun. A lot of memories with my friends during recess and lunch with that game. And that is why it is my number four. Also because it is probably one of, if not my favorite Mario Kart game, but that's a discuss, that, that's something for a different list. So moving on to my number three spot is Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Now, this game, I didn't actually like the multiplayer all that much. Like, the, I wasn't a huge fan, or sorry, not the multiplayer, uh, the single player mode, excuse me. I was not a huge fan of the single player campaign. Um, it, I found it was too slow paced, but anyway, I'm only talking about the multiplayer. Now, the reason I have a picture of the underground here is because this is the multiplayer aspect of the game that I played the most. So me and my friends would sometimes battle with each other, like, we were kind of understanding, like, the mechanics, like, EV training and all that stuff. But we spent, I, I like, I literally have, like, hundreds of, I, I think I have over 500 hours in my Pokemon Pearl. And at least 400 of those are from the underground. Like, it was just so much fun building, like, all these mazes, like, with your secret bases. And then having your friends try and get through them to steal your flag. And then you stopping them from stealing your flag and whatnot. Like, it, it was just awesome. Setting traps down everywhere. Um, and if any of you guys have multiplayer experience with the underground, I'm sure you know how much fun it, how much fun it is. And then sometimes abandoning your base and building a new one like far, far away, like just mind games. And that's what I loved about it. Um, now I, I I gotta say the secret bases in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire they were fun, like they were cool, but they weren't really that interactive. You could link up and have yourself like battle, like a computer version of yourself battle your friends. But, like, that was okay, but it wasn't really that interactive. But Diamond and Pearl, I find, really perfected the secret bases. There was a lot more things you could put in your base, and it's just really, just really cool, like, how much fun I had with my friends. It was just really interactive, and we would sometimes sit there until our batteries died, like, running back and forth to secret bases, like, ranking up our flags and whatnot. And, you know, just just a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, that is my number three spot, the Diamond and Again, the single-player campaign, I didn't really like in Diamond and Pearl. But in the multiplayer was so much fun. So moving on to my number two spot, again, another kind of obscure pick, Metroid Prime Hunters, the multiplayer mode. Now this game, I, I didn't care for the single player campaign that much at all. A lot of people don't. It, this game is usually ranked pretty low on people's like Metroid countdown lists. But uh, this multiplayer, my god, I have had I, I, more hours than Diamond and Pearl's uh, multiplayer. Like I probably had like 600 hours of multiplayer logged into my game but um this game is just so much fun so it's basically like your typical first person shooter like if i were to relate this to any game i would have to relate it to halo multiplayer and even that is kind of loosely relating it because the the way this game works in the multiplayer is that <clears throat> excuse me oh my god wouldn't be a video with me if there wasn't a big burp in the middle of the video but the, the reason I like the multiplayer in this so much is because it's so varied. So you can play as Samus, or you can play as the six other bounty hunters found throughout the single-player campaign, all of which have different special powers. So there's different weapons that you can collect in the single-player that you can also use in the multiplayer. Like, there's a lava weapon, an ice weapon, um, there's, like, a plasma weapon. But um, each of these different hunters has a special affinity with a certain weapon. So, like, there's, like, a a rock spire guy that uh, I think his name is actually spire. It's been a long time since I've played it, but um, he's his magma weapon has like an additional effect where it can light you on fire. And like the ice guy's weapon can let, can freeze you in the spot. So it, it, choosing your fighter was like a very tactical thing. Like, so like I, I personally liked trace the most. He's like this red spider guy that could turn invisible and he used like a sniper laser. Like, could, like you could get like a one hit kill if you got a headshot with it. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of variety in the game. 
Um, me and my friends actually ended up finding like a bunch of glitches in the multiplayer, like glitch walls that you could hide in. Like me and my friends debunked this game to death. We found every little secret in the multiplayer, every little, like each of us had like a different, like favorite fighter, just so much variety in the game. There's like 26 different maps, which is more than most Call of Duty games have these days. Uh, if you don't count like DLC map packs and whatnot, but, um, this is definitely a special game with me. I had a lot of fun memories. Again, this is coming from a guy who doesn't really like first-person shooters. Like, the controls in this game, a lot of people complain, a lot of big complaint people have about this game is the controls. Because you have to use, like, you're using your stylus in one hand, like, to, like, kind of aim around, and then you're using the shoulder button and the directional pad to move and shoot. And a lot of people just couldn't get that control scheme down. But me and my group of friends, we all just seemed to master it, like, no problem. So... So we would play multiplayer on this game. Like, like we played multiplayer in this game probably more than Bomberman and Mario Kart DS combined. Like that's how much we loved it. And like, oh, just so much fun. Like, I, I, I this is, I, I want another Metroid game like this with a multiplayer like this, especially like with online functionality. The DS one had online, but the DS wasn't even that good of a system online, at least with my experience. So I, I think we need another Metroid game, a handheld Metroid game with a multiplayer like this. For the few of you out there who know what I'm talking about with this game, because I'm sure there's not a lot, you will understand why I'm praising it this much. The single player campaign, not a fan of it, but the multiplayer in this game, oh, so good. So moving on to my number one spot. This is probably obvious if you guys follow my channel, but Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Now, this game is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the definitive Smash Brothers game. A lot of people, like, a lot of people, the reason they like Melee is because of the competitive viability to it. I personally like this game because of the fan service, the content, the roster, and just everything about this game I love. I don't even really care that the single player content is kind of weak, because to me, Smash Brothers has always been about playing multiplayer, regular Smash stock matches with my friends. But something that this game added, a huge thing, was, I know Brawl had it, but the online mode. This game, I know it can kind of lag sometimes, but I, my experience with the lag is actually very limited. Like, I almost have, I almost never have problems. Maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe I just have a really good internet connection. But, um, this game is just amazing. I, I don't even care if I'm playing on the couch with my friends locally or if I'm playing online. This game is just, it always quenching my Smash Brothers thirst. There's just so many options, so many items, so many stages. The game is ever changing because of the, balance patches and the uh, new stage DLC, the new character DLC. Th th this game is just never going to get old, in my opinion. Like, I, I still play this game almost every day, even if it's just for 20 minutes. I, I always make sure I get in a Smash session every day. Just really helps me relax. But one thing I really like about this game is that it got me into the competitive scene. I, I, now, when I, I started to kind of follow the competitive scene during the late days of Brawl, like 2011, 2012, when, and then that's when I started to figure out, like, oh, Meta Knight's overpowered, and, like, who's a good character, who's a bad character. But I never really, like, played competitively. This game really got me into the competitive scene with one-on-one -on -one for glory matches. Like, because now I actually understand, like, the like competitive viability of characters. And now I'm starting to actually understand, like, okay, this is a good character, and this is why I should use them. So that's just one great thing that the Smash Brothers, uh, that this Smash Brothers game did, that being the Wii U version. I like the 3DS version, too, but... Let's be real, the Wii U version is superior in pretty much every way. The, the, you know, the music is phenomenal, the graphics are phenomenal, just the stages, the characters, and oh my god, like, th this game is just phenomenal. I've, like, I've had more fun with this game in the little time that I, like, this game hasn't even been out for a year. I've had more fun with this game than I've had with all the other Smash Brothers games combined. Like, th that's how much I just love this game. You know, the, it just feels so good to play. Like, again, don't even care about the single player. Con like, Smash Tour can go eat a dick, but I don't even care about that because the multiplayer in this game is just so perfected. So, well, let me know what you guys think in the comments, what your favorite multiplayer games are. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what I'm stupid for not mentioning. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Share this with your friends. By all means, share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Top 10s and other things Nintendo. All right. Peace out, guys. Bye.